first time, I was struck by the power of music and dance as vital expressions of African culture. I was a guest of the Nigerian West Indian Association, which consisted largely of women from various Caribbean islands married to Nigerians. They were not quite a long way from home. No, it's similar in a way because since, uh, okay, we have the temperature, it's hot here, and we have the food, it's the same food we have here as we have at home, even though it's cooked differently. All African people everywhere are now fully sensitized to the issue of reparation. Visitors to the shrine of Oshun, goddess of the river, are required to seek her blessing. Ife is an ancient Yoruba city, the spiritual center of the Yorubas. So I considered myself privileged to have secured an audience with the Uni of Ife, the king of all Yorubas. I finally got my audience after two hours of waiting, with the Uni making a spectacular entrance. Not for the first time, I was struck by the power of music and dance as vital expressions of African culture. Even the Uni, the king of all the Yorubas, had to obey the rhythm of the drummers. culture, the audience shows its appreciation of performers by giving them money, which is known as praying. I was guided through my audience with the Uni by the King's Head of Protocol. The Uni considered me one of his children from the diaspora, so I had to show respect and traditional style. Kneel down, kneel down, we're on the pad or on the... On the pad. Okay. But my Westernism rendered me incapable of prostrating myself with style or dignity. So I did what amounted to a press up before the king of the Yorubas. <laughs> The Uni regards himself as king not only of the Yorubas in Yoruba land, but Yorubas worldwide, and frequently travels to see his scattered people. Well, you, you know that you are from, you are from, you are from Jamaica, yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
The ambassador of Jamaica is very close to me, and I'm likely to go there any time from now. And uh, may I ask, Your Highness, did you see any similarities between the culture of the people in Jamaica and those of the Yoruba people? Not only culture, as our land is here, it is there as well. Why does she keep the tradition here? And they still keep the Yoruba tradition intact. And culture. And culture. Yoruba culture and tradition is still intact. The best. One Baba, one and uh, when I get there, they all recall that their us. father has come. A position such as yours, which is rooted in tradition, do you ever feel that it, it is threatened by the modern? There is no contradiction between the modern age. He deals with the wind. He deals with the wind. And he controls the wind. Okay. Some of them are travel by the movement of the star by the moon and the sun. And when I travel, I look at the movement of the sun, the moon, and the star, and that indicates where to go. So the power, the ancient power, is still there intact. That ancient power survives throughout Yoruba land. Near Ife, in Oshogbo, traditional deities are still worshipped. The imagery of Yoruba religion has inspired a flourishing artistic movement in the sacred groves of Oshogbo. Visitors to the shrine of Oshun, goddess of the river, are required to seek her blessing. Compelled to part with money yet again seemed to me to undermine the spirituality of the experience. Perhaps, though, this was just my Western attitude. of the river Oshun is believed to have curative properties when applied by a priestess and taken with prayer.
I prayed for a safe journey and for my children, a happiness that would not involve a perpetual search for something which I sometimes fear is irrevocably lost. Lagos at long last. Abuja might be the new capital, but Lagos will long remain the big city, the metropolis which draws young men and women from Nigeria and West Africa. In all my travels, only New York arouses in me the same thrill of arrival. My first port of call was a tailor. I needed a special outfit for a special occasion. It's very nice. Yes, it's very grand. Mm. Gosh, so much cloth. Get it now. Got it. Just like a king now. <laughs> oh, bad. Not, not bad. <laughs> and it fits you well. But it's very heavy. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. That is how they meet it. That's how it is. There's one lighter than this one. Uh -huh. yes, For this example, this one is light. Yes, this one is much lighter, isn't it? It's wonderful. Yes. It's wonderful. Yes. So, what is this one called? Is it the same thing? It's the same thing, and it's the same measurement. Uh huh. So, I think maybe I'll try this one okay, because it's a little lighter. It. Okay. All right. Despite appearances, this was not a wedding, but a funeral party for a rich and prominent chief. He had lived a long and fulfilling life, hence his celebration to assist his passage to the other world. I was a guest of the Nigerian West Indian Association, which consisted largely of women from various Caribbean islands married to Nigerians. They were not quite a long way from home. No, it's similar in a way because, okay, we have the temperature, it's hot here, and we have the food, it's the same food we have here as we have at home, even though it's cooked different. And then certain, certain things, the tradition we find here, you know, like this year now is a funeral. Even though I hear now this is what they're doing in Jamaica, when I was there they wouldn't do this sort of thing for a funeral. They do it more for a wedding. But uh, since this man is a very old man, it's a celebration. But I hear now in Jamaica we're doing the same thing, you know. And we take over the streets uh, like uh, in Jamaica they're doing that too. And in many ways the people are just the same. They're just as noisy. <laughs> you know, and they're just as... Um, quite what I call volatile, you know, emotional, you know, yeah. and they love music, there's a, some similarity in the music, and now in this society you find reggae music is this music, so you know it's very similar. The people, they are similar to back home, they are very warm, they are friendly, they are very hospitable, and um, they welcome foreigners, especially West Indians. They have that affection for us. <laughs> so where are you most comfortable, here or in Jamaica? Ah, definitely in Jamaica. <laughs> home is home. There is no place like home. <laughs> Badagri, along the coast from Lagos, may have been the last site of home for the ancestors of some of those women. Perhaps my own ancestors last saw Africa here as well. Centuries ago, this was a major slave in port. This ancient cotton tree bears witness to that terrible past. 
Slaves used to be chained to it. A pageant staged by the reparation movement. This is a fast-growing campaign determined to secure compensation from the West for the exploitation and loss of lives involved in the slave trade. Its supporters believe that Africa is still suffering from that shameful and violent phase in its history. Looking at the faces of the children, their sad bewilderment, I wondered whether they could fathom the depths of cruelty and suffering inflicted on this spot, whether the memory of slavery haunts them the way it sometimes haunts the children of Africa in the West. While this pageant was being staged, one of the prime movers behind the campaign was holding a press conference in a nearby slave museum. And these are the things that they are using for the slaves during the olden days. And yeah. they use this one for the nails. They'll padlock it here. Another person will put his own. That's how they put it on the line. It's straight away from each line. And they started whipping them with horse whip, one by one. They continue going one by one. So, really... Chief Abiola is a Yoruba, a press magnet, and a philanthropist. Accompanying him was Dudley Thompson, a Jamaican High Commissioner to Nigeria and a new world organizer of the reparation movement. It is then tighten up. Then they put a lock here. They put a lock it. They put a lock it here. Yes. Yeah. Then they put another one on another fellow. Please remove it. They use this one for the mouth. They draw it with, like this, they paint it with hot iron, they put padlock on it. So this one will disturb the art of eating the sugar cane. Mm. Sometimes, I'm The reparation movement is an initiative both of Africans in Africa and New World Africans. But the Nigerian involvement is crucial. Its size and population have long given it an automatic leadership status in Africa, which it now appears to be taken seriously. This uh, campaign for reparations has been going on for quite some time. And um, in fact, uh, it's becoming a movement already. It's not becoming a movement. It has become a movement. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, yes. so, yes. so how would you assess the response so far? All African people everywhere are now fully sensitized to the issue of reparation. First of all, the problem of slavery has always been a problem that every African has been aware of. They are taught about it from birth. The only way it can be explained for a large number of Africans to be in America is because of slavery. Which of the Western countries uh, will pay this reparation? Who does one charge yeah, to save it? You see, uh, this is not a court of public opinion. This is an interview. Okay? When the time comes, see, those who did it are very clear. The ships that left Africa flew flags of their various countries, where human beings were packed like sardines in the holes. But see, we're not even going to accuse anybody. People are saying, and legitimately, why is Africa so backward? We are saying, it, 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 it is like asking, why can't you run? when your leg has been broken. 
if my leg has been broken, I will run by mend the legs. Reparation in Oxford English Dictionary means rep from the Latin word reparare, to make whole again. We've been damaged economically, psychologically. Slavery, of course, was not just a physical ordeal. There was a greater tragedy. The depth of that tragedy becomes clear to me, a new world African, whenever I visit the continent. In the dank, dark ship holes of the Middle Passage across the Atlantic Ocean, in the heat of the sugar and cotton plantations of the Americas, the enslaved Africans lost their myths their gods, their rituals of celebration, their languages, their names. A search for those things lost, to cease feeling like orphans of history. That's why some of us come back to Africa again and again. But sometimes I do fear that those losses are irretrievable.